This week on the Charger Bulletin News, the University of New Haven enters its centennial. Find out what events the campus will be hosting throughout the year. In light of the coronavirus, the Chinese Student Scholar Association decided to cancel its Chinese New Year event. We sat down with the International Services Office to learn more. Last week, we lost a basketball legend. Stay tuned to hear from our Chargers on how Kobe Bryant impacted them. All of this and more coming up on a new season of the Charger Bulletin News. Welcome to a new season of the Charger Bulletin News. I'm Julianne Brown. And I'm Ariana Lasher. Here are this week's top stories. The year 2020 brings the University of New Haven to its 100th anniversary. In celebration of this milestone, the University will be hosting a series of events throughout the year, including the grand opening of the Bergami Center for Science, Technology and Innovation, the reveal of a statue by the Beckerman Recreation Center, and the centennial commencement. The festivities will kick off this Friday with a celebration weekend for alumni, parents, and faculty in Boca Raton, Florida. For more information on the university's centennial, you can visit 100.newhaven.edu. For our spring 2020 graduates, the Chariot Yearbook has released the dates for senior portraits. Photographer Roman will be on campus February 19th, 20th, and the 25th in the Moulton Lounge, and the 24th in the Alumni Annex. Sessions will include photos in cap and gown and headshots in formal attire that will be used for the yearbook. Sessions are free, but photos will be available for purchase once they are uploaded on the photographer's website. You can sign up for your session at photographybyroman.net slash book dash now. Super Bowl 54 kicked off at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Sunday with gospel singer Yolanda Adams' performance of America the Beautiful alongside the Children's Choir of Miami. Demi Lovato delivered a powerful rendition of the national anthem, making it her second appearance since her drug overdose in 2018. Fans tweeted comparing the performance to the late Whitney Houston's 1991. Entertainment Weekly reported, quote, Demi Lovato just gave a national anthem performance that would make Whitney Houston proud, end quote. Shakira and Jennifer Lopez represented the Hispanic community with their historical performance in the Pepsi Super Bowl halftime show. This was the first time either of them hit the Super Bowl stage and the first time two Latinas co-headlined the halftime show. Before hitting the stage, Lopez shared a photo of the two hugging and captioned it, let's show the world what two little Latina girls can do. Shakira started off with a medley of her hit songs, including She Wolf and Whenever, Wherever. Puerto Rican rapper Bad Bunny joined her singing the hit, I Like It. After a, a short rendition of Hips Don't Lie, Jennifer Lopez took over the stage. Lopez was joined by both Colombian rapper J Balvin for a performance of Mi Gente and her 11-year-old daughter Emmy singing Born in the USA. Lopez represented the Puerto Rican community by unveiling the Puerto Rican flag towards the end of her hit song, Let's Get Loud. The Washington Times reported, Jennifer Lopez and Shakira brought an unmistakably Latin feel to the Super Bowl halftime show. Not only does everyone anticipate the Super Bowl halftime show, but also the Super Bowl commercials. One of the commercials that stood out the most was the Microsoft commercial on assistant 49ers female coach Katie Sowers. Sowers made history on being the first woman ever to coach in the Super Bowl. In the commercial, Sauer says, quote, I'm not trying to be the best female coach, I'm trying to be the best coach, end quote. Opening the doors to the next generation of not only girls, but anyone who wants to lead. Post Malone starred in the Bud Light Seltzer commercial. Bud Light had filmed two different ads starring Malone, and fans got to vote on which one aired during the big game. In the chosen commercial, Post Malone walks into a convenience store trying to decide on either to buy a pack of Bud Light beer or Bud Light seltzer. After an internal debate, he decides to buy both. Ellen DeGeneres and her wife Portia showed us what life was before Alexa. John Krasinski let his 2020 Hyundai Sonata park itself while John Legend and Chrissy Teigen made a luxurious exit in a Genesis GV80. 
Last week, a helicopter crash took the lives of nine people, including Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna. All throughout the world, people have mourned this sudden loss, from Alicia Keys and Boys to Men at the Grammys to Usher at the Lakers game on Saturday. Celebrities have paid tribute to the basketball star and his daughter. Kobe Bryant touched the lives of many, including our very own Chargers. Here with more is Joe Klaus. Thanks, Nicole. Kobe Bryant inspired not only basketball players, but athletes from all different sports. Here on campus, I interviewed a couple of athletes to see how Kobe impacted them and what this loss means to them. Kobe was a big competitor against, against the Celtics, and uh, just watching him, watching him working hard and evolving as a player, uh, it kind of, uh, you know, I think not only for me, but a lot of people even in Boston and the LA area, um, for athletes around those areas, um, I think it inspired a lot of people to have heart, or it showed a lot of people what hard work can do uh, when it comes to athletics and uh, the mentality that you have to have to win games and to be the best, best player and even comp uh, competitor that you can be. Tyler Wells from the baseball team said, quote, Kobe was for our generation the closest thing we ever got to Michael Jordan. He was greater than just basketball. He was a role model to so many, and that loss is devastating. The whole situation is incredibly tragic, end quote. Kobe was all about winning and the idea of the Mamba mentality, and that's what our Chargers have. Starting off on the hardwood, the women's basketball team hosted Franklin Pierce University Saturday afternoon. The Chargers had huge second and third quarters, which led them to a 64-59 win. Junior guard Bree Pergolo dropped 16 points, grabbed six boards, and dished five assists. The Chargers moved to 14-6 and six overall and 8-5 and in the conference. After the women's game, it was the men's turn against Franklin Pierce University. It was quite the battle during the first half, but after a 50-point second half, the Chargers pulled out a 78-73 win. Senior guard Elijah Bailey led the Chargers with 21 points. Senior for forward Kesley Felizor had himself a double-double, du dropping 21 points and grabbing 13 boards. With the win, New Haven moves 10-9 overall and 8-5 and in the conference. Now Wednesday night is doubleheader action as Pace University comes to West Haven to face both the men and women's basketball teams. The ladies tip off at 5.30, followed by the men at 7.30. Make sure to pop out the Charger Gymnasium to watch both teams, and remember, support the boys. Now it's that time of year again. Spring sports again ready to start. Northeast 10 preseason rankings are in. Charger softball is ranked fourth as they head down to Florida at the end of this week. Wish I was going to Florida with them, and I wasn't here with all this cold. Senior, now, for baseball, they're ranked fifth in the Northeast 10, and senior Matt Chamberlain was selected to the preseason first team all region. Congrats to Matt. Women's lacrosse now has been ranked 15th in the nation. That's according to the UWLCA preseason division two poll. The Chargers are one of six Northeast 10 teams to be nationally ranked, the most of any division two conference. So congrats to the lacrosse team and hope we see that rank go up. That's all we have this week for sports. Until next week, back to you, Julianne. In an email sent last week, the Chinese Student and Scholars Association announced the postponement of the Chinese New Year celebration, which was scheduled for January 31st. According to the email, the reason for the cancellation was health concerns regarding the coronavirus, which originated in Wuhan, China. Min Zhang, the student president of CSSA, stated in the email, quote, with concerns regarding public health safety and out of an abundance of caution, the Chinese consulate General in New York has suggested to Chinese communities and organizations in its consular district to cancel or postpone public Chinese New Year activities and celebrations, end quote. Serena Pervincenzi sat down with Sarah Driscoll from the International Services Office to find out more. My name is Serena Pervincenzi and I'm with the Charger Bulletin. In the midst of the coronavirus, we sat down with Sarah Driscoll from the University of New Haven's International Student Office. Stay tuned as we find out how the virus is affecting us here and what we can do about it. We just had a couple questions on behalf of the Charger Bulletin news about the Chinese New Year celebration and the decision to cancel it. Would you mind like elaborating a little bit more on that? Sure, yeah. So I uh, am the advisor for the Chinese Student and Scholar Association and worked with them pretty thoroughly on the planning of the event for, that was scheduled for today. Um, I met with Min Zhang, who is the president, earlier this week, and she expressed to me some concerns about hosting it that she had been advised by the consulate of new york and some of her members 
that it could be a, a health worry. And in abundance of caution, she and the members of the CSSA decided that it would be best to postpone it. From there, we talked to a variety of different offices to um, finally come to the decision that they would postpone the event that was scheduled for Friday. Obviously, people are disappointed. They were excited to celebrate the new year, but they think it is it is best for everyone's health and well-being to, to postpone it for now. And as the crisis passes, are there plans for some sort of makeup celebration? Hopefully, um, things are a bit up in the air at the moment as we're waiting to see how the coronavirus is developing. So at the moment, we have not set a date for the uh, Chinese New Year celebration, and we will kind of wait and see at this point. Um, but there are going to be some other opportunities for the Chinese students and other international students to celebrate their culture and share their culture with the community at um, International Festival iFest on March 28th. So the students have expressed that some of the performances that were planned for Friday um, can be used at that event too. In terms of a specific Chinese New Year celebration, we don't know quite yet, but um, there will be other opportunities. That's great. And uh, lastly, is there anything that we can do as students to help support our peers during this crisis? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think everyone can just try their best. It is flu season to be careful about washing hands and, and being safe, but you're right that it is a time when Chinese students in particular um, are potentially undergoing a, a crisis in their home country and family members or friends may be sick or in danger of getting sick. And so just being a source of support um, for the students in this, in this difficult moment would be great. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Remember to take care of yourselves while remaining empathetic to those more impacted around you. Here's what's happening this week on campus. Interested in fire eating and other jaw-dropping stunts? Stop by Tom Britton's Freak Show and Tell tonight in the Bucknell Theater at 9 p.m. Tuesday, Black History Month kicks off with the Next Gen panel at 8 p.m. in the Alumni Lounge. On Wednesday, men's and women's basketball will face off against Pace University in the Charger Gymnasium. The women's game begins at 5.30, followed by the men's at 7.30. End your week with a comedy show hosted by the Black Student Union in the Bucknell Theater on Friday from 6 to 9.30 p.m. Interested in joining the Charger Bulletin? Come by for our interest meeting on Wednesday, February 5th in the Maxi 118 at 7 p.m. to learn how you can get involved with the newspaper and broadcasts. That's all we have for this week's edition of the Charger Bulletin News. Check out thechargerbulletin.com for more. We'll see you next week.